Before starting, you're going to need to get the Linux source code. You can do that in a couple of ways. For example, you can clone it with Git. If you want some instructions about doing that, you can check out my video about making a simple distro for Linux. But anyway, in this video, I'm just going to assume you already have it. And afterwards, you're going to want to run make menu config. I'm not going to run it here, but you can run it if it's your first time compiling the Linux source code. Run make menu config and make sure that you're compiling the x64 kernel. In this video, I'm going to assume we're working with the x64 kernel. I have here on the side the kernel documentation. I have here a guide for actually adding a system call to the kernel. So this is not going to be for production, it's just for fun and learning purposes. We can see that according to the docs here, we need to actually start by using the syscall define macro. So I have here open the syscalls.h file with the definitions of the syscall define macros. And we're going to actually use syscall define zero because we don't need any arguments on our syscall. It's just going to be a syscall that prints something on the screen. So I'm going to use syscall define zero. And I'm going to define my syscall near the v fork system call defined right over here. So it's going to be defined pretty similar to how this one is defined. So for this, I'm going to go to kernel and then fork.c file. I'm going to search for v fork. Now let's go ahead and define a new system call right over here. By the way, I have a video dedicated on explaining what is a system call, but I'll just give a couple of words about this. Basically, a system call is an interface to the kernel from the user mode. So if the user mode wants some kind of functionality from the kernel, one of the interfaces to get to the kernel is through the system calls. For example, you want to go ahead and create a file or open an existing file, you're going to make a system call for that. In this case, I'm just going to add a new hello world system call that you're just going to call from user mode, and it's just going to print hello world on the screen. So I'm going to start by using the syscall define macro with zero, no arguments for this syscall. I'm going to call this nearest call. What I'm going to do inside the syscall, I'm going to go back to the kernel documentation. Here you can see the various log levels. For example, this is the emergency level, and these are very important messages. While you have the debug level, which is less important messages. So for this case, I'm going to use the info level. And we can use the PR info function for this. I'm just going to print hello from near system call. Let's now go back to the documentation of adding a new system call. And we see that afterwards we need to add this into a header file, syscalls.h. So let's go to this header file. After v fork, I'm going to add my system call. Finally, let's scroll a little bit down here. I'm going to read the specific part that talks about x86 system call implementation. I'm going to go to this file specified right over here. And I'm going to add my new system call to this table. You can see a basic documentation of the format right over here. Basically, got the syscall number here. Then we got the ABI on the next entry. We're just going to use common. Then we have the name of the system call. And we have the actual entry point. So I'm just going to go to the bottom of this table and add a new number here. That's going to be 548. It's going to be common type. My system call name is going to be nearest call. And the entry point is going to be sys and then nearest call. Now I'm going to save this. Remember 548, that's the system call number. We're going to use this later. Now let's go ahead and run make to actually build the kernel. By the way, I use the minus J flag on the make to actually split the make into multiple jobs. This is useful if you have a multiple cores. This can make the build faster. After it finished compiled, you'll see a message that says BZ image is ready. Now let's go ahead and copy the BZ image, which is the actual kernel image. Let's go ahead and copy this aside. Later, we're going to use this to actually boot. I'm using the docker cp command here. This is the docker copy command, copying a file from the docker to my host machine. Afterwards, I'm going to go ahead and make the actual init process. The init process is just going to call the system call and then it's going to be in an infinite loop. That's what I plan it to be. I'm going to make this in the nearest init folder. I'm going to write this in assembly. So I'm going to open a new assembly file. I'm going to call it init.asm. I'm going to use the NASM assembler for this. This is going to be the syntax. This exposes my entry point. Global is a NASM command that exposes this outside of the program. Afterwards, I'm going to start the text section. So from here on, the code is actually going to start. 
and I'm going to start the start label here. This is going to be very simple. I'm just going to move into rex the system call number I want to call. And for this, I'm going to open again the file with the system call, which I'm going to find in cloned Linux. And then I'm going to go to this file. And you can see that we put the system call as number 548. So I'm going to write 548 here. This is the system call number of nearest call. Afterwards, I'm going to call the syscall command. This is an assembly command that actually does the system call. Afterwards, I'm going to make an infinite loop with jump dollar. Now let's go ahead and save this. I'm going to assemble this with NASM. Type is going to be elf64. That's going to be the format, minus F flag. And I'm going to run the linker with the object file. And now we should have a.out. This is the actual init program. Let's rename this to be init. And now I'm going to actually make the init ramfs archive. And I'm going to use the CPIO command for this. I'm going to start by finding. And this is going to find init. So you can see that just, this just prints the list with init inside. This is so I can pass this on to CPIO. Minus O means create a new archive. Minus H, new C. This is the type of the archive that the kernel accepts. I'm going to direct this into init.cpio. Now you can see we have a new file here called init.cpio. Now I'm going to copy this outside to my host machine. Now I'm going to run QEMU and actually boot up my system. For the kernel, I'm going to pass the BZ image. This is going to be the image of the kernel. I'm going to pass this into QEMU. QEMU is an emulator for x86 and a bunch of other architectures. Basically emulates a computer booting up. And then I'm going to uh, specify the init RD parameter. And here I'm going to pass the actual init RAMFS, which is going to be init.cpio. Now you can see the computer booting up right over here. These are a bunch of messages from the kernel. And eventually, it's going to run init as the init process. And here you can see hello from near system call. So the system call actually worked. Now it's stuck on the infinite loop that I put in the program. Subscribe for more programming videos, and thanks for watching.